Hello everyone, this is Adam here with AJT Design, here today with an instruction video for you guys. This is for the Jeep Wrangler JL. So if you have a fob that looks like one of these guys, with remote start, without remote start, um, we have a new solution for that, looks like this. A um, Couple things to point out just right away, um, I've had some questions, because there are two different versions, people want to know what to order. When you buy it from us, it includes enough buttons to do either one of these guys. Uh, with remote start or without so you don't need to worry about whether or not you have that um, So again, this is the product we have um, What we've done here is we've basically taken this flip key out of it um, the early feedback we got um, From the Jeep Wrangler JL owners is that this key is not um, really used that often um, that it's often in the way um, you know, flips out when it's in your pocket and it just, it kind of makes the fob big. Um, it, it's a little bit too big. Um, we've been able to at least reduce the width um, on our design. The overall length is about the same. The thickness is about the same, but the width at least, it's not as wide. Now it's symmetrical. Um, the other thing uh, with this, you can order this in a lot of different colors. We have um, seven, seven colors for the case right now four different colors for the buttons, four different colors for the screws, give some um, options for um, you know customizing. So that's, that's basically what we do with this thing. Um, now this is an instruction video, um, so I'll show you guys how basically to take this apart, um, remove all the parts that you need, and then put them into one of our new cases. So the first thing here, what we'll wanna do is um, take this back cover off and what you'll want to do is there's a little spot right in there where you can get a screwdriver in. So you just take a screwdriver like that and twist, pop it open. What you want to do is kind of work it around the edge and then pull this off. This one's been off a couple times as it comes off pretty easy. Again, just work this around like so. And this back cover come, just basically snaps right off. Um, so this is what you're gonna be left with after that. Next thing you wanna do is remove this battery. There's a little spot right there. Screwdriver comes in, battery, battery comes out. Save the battery, unless it's dead. Um, then after that, there's three, or excuse me, four small Torx screws that you have to remove. Um, when you buy our case, we do include um, a little screwdriver. It's a T6 um, Torx drive uh, to remove these. So you just go in there and remove all four of these screws. I'm gonna tilt the camera down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. So with those four screws removed, this next piece will come, come apart. Um, so what just fell on the floor um, is the spring and the push button for this key, um, which we won't need to reuse. Um, the other side here, there go those little screws too. Um, this is your circuit board. So this is kind of the, the heart of the whole thing. A little sticky in there. There it goes. So you definitely want to save this. Um, probably want to save the key. We'll show you what we're going to do with that later. Um, this piece we don't need. And the only other thing we need out of here is there is a transponder that's right in here. Now it shouldn't be glued in, which means you don't really have to cut it out, but what you want to do is carefully remove that. There's a space for this thing in the new fob. What the transponder does, um, just so you guys know, is um, if you're all of these new Jeeps are push button start, which if you have one of these, you already know that. Um, now, if your fob battery dies, um, there's a provision where you can hold this right up to the ignition and press the button and it'll still start. 
And this little transponder chip is what enables it to do that. So it's very important. Um, you want to remove that carefully and place that into the new fob. So if your um, fob battery dies, um, you're not stranded, you'll be able to start your vehicle. So well, yeah, what you want to do is kind of get in there with a small screwdriver and just kind of gently pry that out. I'm going to use a utility blade to get down the side of it. It's not glued in or anything, but it is in there fairly tight. And you do want to make sure that you don't uh, damage it. So if you're using a knife, obviously be careful. Loosen that up a bit. There we go. So you can see I've gotten on the side of that, and then this thing comes comes right out. Again, um, not that hard to remove because it's not glued, but yeah, do take your time and don't damage it because if you do, it um, will not function properly. Okay, so we've got all that stuff removed. Um, now it is time to put this thing together. So when you order one of these from us, you're going to get the case, which is these two pieces here, plus the lid on the back, which I'll uh, demonstrate later. Uh, gasket. Uh, button set. Again, available in four different colors. And screws and a wrench. So what you're going to want to do first is uh, place the buttons inside the uh, top case of the fob. And when you open up this bag, you're going to find uh, five different buttons and a tiny little triangular piece. So because our, the one that I'm demonstrating on is the one with the remote start, you're going to want to take the one that has the unlock lock button that looks like this and also the start button and the panic button, which is common between both styles. The other buttons we can set aside. That one actually had an extra one in there. Yours won't have that. So what you want to do is put the buttons in first. So the lock and lock one goes up at the top. And these only fit in one way. The start one goes underneath it. The panic one goes underneath that. And what you want to do is you take the gasket and set it in there. Again, this thing only goes in one way, so it should be pretty obvious. And then from the back side, it'll look like that. Or if you had the other version, these two buttons would be um, the different ones. Now, the one option you can do with this, um, this little triangle piece, if you want, you can put it in this little center, this center slot. And what that does is when you're pushing the lock and the unlock, it only allows you to kind of press one of them at a time. Um, makes it a little bit more difficult to press, but it prevents accidentally locking it when you want to lock it and, and vice versa. So kind of depends if you've got big fingers, whether or not you want to use that. I'm going to leave it out. I think the feel is better without it um, personally, but it's, uh, it's up to you. It's easy enough to take apart and put back together if you want to experiment around with that. Um, once that's done... Um, before you forget, put this chip back in. So the chip goes right in that slot there. So you just want to press that in. Doesn't need to go in all the way because there's a groove for it on the other side and you can put it together and do a test fit. Make sure it's down all the way. Then what we'll do is you'll take the board, you set it in and it's uh, pretty obvious where it goes. You know, the, the little buttons go in, there's, go in these holes here, just like that. And then the next part is a little bit tricky, but it's not hard if you use the right technique. Um, and that's basically sandwiching the whole thing together um, while the battery is in there. Before I do this, I'm actually gonna get the screws ready to go. Cause it's kind of a deal where you gotta hold it together and then start screwing it down. And it's, it's not difficult, um, but again, you wanna use the right technique. So we, I, what I like to do is I like to put the battery, hold this thing kind of like this 
at a slight angle, just like this, so that this metal clip is kind of facing downward. Set the battery on top of it. Um, the plus side uh, from this view is facing up, positive side. You can see on the, um, on the case we have positive side down, so that when the case goes on it, the positive side is down on there. And what you want to do is just kind of come at it at kind of an angle just like this. What we've got is um, this little piece. Let me show you. This little piece here kind of holds the battery in place, and there's two posts that locate the board to kind of keep everything positioned properly. Um, so if you just go to set it down like this, um, the, the battery's not going to be in position and it's, it's not going to close down. If you do this right, it requires almost no force at all. If it feels like it's not going, don't force it. Try again. So again, hold it kind of like this. Come down on an angle like this. Um, and I've done this so many times. It just go, goes right together like that. Now if you try to do it and it's got like an eighth of an inch and it doesn't go, like I said, don't apply force. Try it again until it goes together with almost no effort. Um, once you've got it held down, then you can start putting your screws in. And again, this is these are uh, these are plastic parts. It's a tap hole, so you can get these things snug, but don't tighten them as hard as you can, um, or you can um, strip these holes out or damage the fob. If you get them, um, you know, kind of you can kind of feel when they bottom out. Just get them a little bit snug. Um, it should stay in place and not have any problems. Um, obviously don't ever use Loctite. On these cases we include a card that says it in big red letter, letters, don't use Loctite. Loctite has acetone. Acetone is not compatible with the ABS or PC ABS that these are made out of. Oops. So, so once that's done, um, you know, test it out. Make sure all the buttons work. Um, if any of them are sticking at all, like this one is here a little bit, um, what you'll need to do is take the whole thing apart and work the button in and out manually um, until it moves without sticking. Um, what, what can happen is on some of these, you might have a little bit of flash from the manufacturing process. This is an early prototype. Um, we're trying to work all that out so that the buttons in most cases should go in without any issues. But if you happen to get one like that, um, it's pretty easy to just work it in and out until um, it slides freely and then you're and then you're good to go um, yeah so I'm not going to take this one apart and show it right now but that's um, that's all you have to do the other piece to this is your your kind of your emergency key and you have a couple different options and I've talked to a lot of people with these new Jeep um, the, the Wrangler JLs some people don't use this at all. They have a soft top. They never lock it anyway. Um, some people were interested in doing the hide a key version, just hiding this on the vehicle somewhere. You can leave it like this and just put it on a, on a key ring. So this is just one of your keys. Um, the other option we have is there's a little pocket back here. And the key will fit back there. Um, however, in order to get the key back there, this knuckle has to be removed, and in order to remove the knuckle, you have to knock out this little pin here. And this is a 16th of an inch um, roll pin. It's not hard to remove, you just need a few basic tools. First thing you need is a block of wood, or basically something that you can rest this on, but that has a hole in the middle somewhere for the pin to go when you knock it out. Uh, this is a climate knob I happen to have on hand, so I'm gonna use that. Um, you need a hammer, it doesn't have to be this big. And also, oh, um, a punch or a small nail or something that's a sixteenth of an inch in diameter or less to push it out. So what you want to do is you just line this up. And if, I found these little nails work great because the, the point of the nail will go right in the center of this roll pin and center itself so it's really easy to line up. And what you want to do is just hold this over here. Keep it steady. Very, um, doesn't take much force at all. Sliding all over the place on me. Hold up. There it goes. So the pin has come right out of there. It's this little Little piece right there. 
and now the key will just come right right out. May need to use a screwdriver, pry it, but it will. The key will come out, and if you like, you can put it back there. Close the lid, and now you've got the key inside the fob, saving yourself a little bit of the space there for emergency purposes if you need it. Um, and some people have asked me too, well, how do you get any leverage on it? You've just got this little thing. Um, and really this is intended for people who use it only in emergency situations. Um, depending on what you're doing, how strong you are, how strong your fingers are, you may be able to just grip it like this. If not, you can use this right in here, um, the key ring hole, and get a little bit of a grip on there. Again, I wouldn't recommend doing this as like an everyday type of a thing, but um, just for a, an in case of emergency situation, um, that'll work just fine. Um, the other thing too is if you get this thing and you you snap this in and you find it's very difficult to remove with your fingernail. Um, if you work it in and out with a screwdriver like this a few times, it'll wear off any flash from the manufacturing process and it should um, snap in and out with minimal effort. Um, you know, we did design it to be a pretty tight fit so that it doesn't accidentally pop open. You don't want to lose your key. Um, but anyways, that's, that's pretty much it. There you have it. Um, Again, this is what it looks like if you don't have the remote start. Those buttons, unlock, lock, panic. Um, and this is with the remote start options. You have the panic, the start button, the lock, and the unlock. Um, that's all for this video. That should pretty much uh, cover anything. If you got any questions, shoot me an email. I'll have my email address um, in the description below, as well as a link to our website if you'd like to order this. Thanks for watching.